Hey everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today I'll be showing some Dreamcast emulation on the NVIDIA Shield. For those of you not familiar with the Shield, it's a 4K media and gaming streaming device that's powered by the NVIDIA Tegra X1 processor and speeds around 1.9GHz, along with 3GB of RAM. And for the operating system, it uses Android 8.0 64-bit. And for the memory, it has 16GB built in, with the option to add more via the two USB 3.0 ports. So if you're looking to use the Shield for retro gaming emulation, these things are quite the powerhouse. And I did get mine at Best Buy on Black Friday for about 159 bucks, but I think regularly these are going for 199 So I will be testing 18 different Dreamcast games out using the Raycast emitter version R8.1, which is the latest available and has the best Dreamcast game compatibility. Although when using this version of the app, there is some bugs and minor issues that's mainly related to the user interface. So if you're looking for a more stable release, I would recommend using version R7. But as far as the gameplay goes, version R8.1 does a better job. And I will leave a link down below for the different versions of Raycast that are available for Android if you want to check those out. So let's go ahead and try a game out. Let's play Sonic Adventure 2. For game formats, it accepts GDI, CDI, and some CHD games up to version 4. As far as the performance goes for Dreamcast simulation on the Nvidia Shield, I think it does a good job. But one thing you do want to keep in mind is there is no Dreamcast simulator that plays the games perfect. If you're looking for perfection, playing the games on the original hardware is always best. On the NVIDIA Shield, most of the Dreamcast games seem to play at very close to full speed, giving a nice and smooth gameplay experience. But when you start looking closer, you might notice graphical errors. For instance here, Sonic has no shadow. Now to me, something like this just isn't that big of an issue, and I can still enjoy playing the game just fine. But one thing that is really strange is how different this simulator can perform on different devices. For instance, on the Amazon Fire 4K TV stick, using the same exact emulator, Sonic Shadow is present, but the gameplay is no good with a lower frames per second and stuttering music. And these differences are caused by a lot of different things, such as the chipsets and how the operating systems are configured, plus many other factors. So with the Shield, I picked 18 random games to test out, and I would say every game is in a playable state, with some games not even showing any noticeable issues. And I've tested a lot of different devices with Dreamcast simulation, with the results usually not being so great. And with the Shield, it's definitely towards the top of my list with Dreamcast emulation performance. Now, is there other devices out there that can emulate Dreamcast better? Yes, there's going to be high-end computers that can do a better job and some other devices out there. But more than likely, you're going to end up spending way more than 200 bucks to get this kind of performance. But there is a couple exceptions out there, such as the Odroid XU4 single board computer that also emulates Dreamcast well. And they started around $70 without a case. And I'm actually a big fan of the XU4, but I'd say it's more of a straight emulation device. And the Nvidia Shield, I would say, is more of a universal device that allows you to stream, play games, watch movies, and more. And the game I'm playing right now is Dynamite Dika 2, and this is actually one of my favorite games for Dreamcast, and my favorite thing about it is that you can play two player at the same time, which makes this a blast. Me and my son have played this together multiple different times, and we have fun doing it every single time. The graphics are nothing to brag about and the controls are pretty simple, but there's just something about this game that makes it so addictive, and I think it's just the simplicity of it that makes it so fun. And as you can see, the Shield is doing a pretty good job emulating the game, and I can't really see any issues. And for those of you out there wondering about the frames per second, the Raycast emitter does have a frames per second counter, but it does not work properly, so I'm not going to be using it in this video. And this is Shinmu, which is in a very playable state, but has some graphical issues, mainly with the main character. So if you look closely, well, actually you don't have to look closely at all. If you just look at his jacket, you can see some of the textures and polygons are missing. Look on the back of the jacket there, there's a chunk missing. And this seems to be an issue when using the Raycast emulator on multiple different platforms when playing this game. There always seems to be textures missing from the main character. As far as the gameplay goes, it seems to play great. I'm really not noticing any other issues besides those graphical issues on the main character. So this might be a deal breaker for some people out there, but for myself, I can deal with this small issue and play on. So when using this version of the emulator, version R8.1, I have run into some issues loading games sometimes. What will happen is after that Dreamcast BIOS loads and gets to the date and time screen, and I try to select the date and time, it freezes up and sends me back to the main menu. But I have figured out a workaround for this. Once you're on the date and time screen, you can open up the emulator settings menu by pushing the back button or select button, then select config menu once you're inside there. Then what I do is I turn on some of the options like the limit frame rate and frame skip. I turn those on, then right back off, and then I back out of the menu. Then I can select that date and time and load the game like normal. And usually this trick works most of the time. So this can become annoying if every time you load a game you have to do this trick. But just to let you know, on version R7 this didn't seem to be an issue. And this is one of my favorite fighting games, Soul Calibur. 
and it plays nice and smooth, but it does have some graphical issues as well. But what's strange is it only seems to be with one of the players, and that's going to be Maxi. As you can see right here, everything looks fine. But when I get to the next player, Maxi, he seems to have some issues. So when playing with Maxi, the gameplay is just fine. That frames per second seems to be pretty high, but check out his legs. They're all distorted, and they look really funny. And just like Shinmu, when playing on other devices, I have noticed this issue as well when playing with Maxi. Oh, and I just noticed something else. I guess there's no shadows either. So I'm just going to let the game play on here for just a few. Now this game right here on Real Tournament was not very playable at all on version R7. I had a lot of issues with the main menu just going blank and not be able to see anything until a game loaded and then a lot of textures missing. But on version R8.1 it seems to be doing a lot better job. So I'd say it's very playable now, but as you can see, it still has some texture issues. You can see a lot of those textures flickering off and on, and I'd have to go back and play this on the original Dreamcast just to see if some of these did happen on the original hardware as well. And I'm guessing on the original hardware, there's probably still some issues with the textures, but it's probably a lot less. And here's a throwback for you. This is the Planet Web Browser 3.0 for Dreamcast. Now this is how you used to have to connect to the internet when you used your Dreamcast. And I had a keyboard and a full setup. And I remember the first game I ever played online was Speed Devils. And then the second game that I played online was Sonic Adventure. It was some sort of special stage where we competed to try to win $5,000. I don't know if anyone out there remembers that, but I remember that race pretty vividly. It's just too bad that it didn't win. And for Capcom vs SNK, it seems to be doing a really good job with this game, and I haven't really noticed much problems. So even though this is a 2D fighter, it's still a fairly demanding game because it's got all kinds of music and sound effects playing, and it's a pretty fast paced game. So from this point on, with each game that I'm testing out, I'm going to try to give a brief description of how the game's doing, and then show about a minute of gameplay. Here's Charge and Blast, and from what I can see, the game seems to be playing great. And this is actually a really fun game to play. My only gripe is the game's kind of short. I remember buying this back in the day, and I beat this the same day I bought the game, and I was so disappointed. Crazy Taxi 2. Hey, taxi. And for Crazy Taxi 2, the game seems to play nice and smooth, but I have noticed it seems to be easier to play with a D-pad instead of the analog stick. Also, the music does work, I just turned it off for copyright purposes. Also, I don't really care much for the band. And I'll have to play this on the original Dreamcast to confirm this, but it looks like there should be shadows in the game as well, and they seem to be missing. And that does seem to be an issue with a lot of different Dreamcast games when you're using the Raycast emulator. Those shadows seem to be missing. And this simulator does have a lot of different settings you can play with and tweak, but I haven't had any luck yet with trying to get shadows to appear. Make a ride. I know it! Do better. See ya. Hop in anytime. Uh, Taxi! Hey, hey, hey! You suck. Come here. You can run fast. Take us to the gap. For Daytona USA, the game seems to play great. I just had that similar issue with the shadows. Also, if you look closely, you can see some of those textures are flickering off and on on the car. Check your position. 
For Echo the Dolphin, the game seems to play just fine, but I never really was a big fan of Echo for the Dreamcast. It seems like the game is a little rushed, and they could have done a better job with it. And this is Donald Duck Quack Attack, and I have tried both versions of this game. The US version is called Going Quackers, and they both seem to suffer from the same issue. There seems to be a brightness problem where that screen seems really dim, but you can see that it flickers on and off randomly, getting brighter at times. So oddly, out of all the games I tested, I'd say this one probably has the worst performance. Metropolis Street Racer seems to play really nice, looks great, and it even has shadows. And I can still hit that wall like a champ. Dino Crisis plays good, I really haven't noticed any problems, but wow, this game is so slow to start with. You gotta play for like half hour before you even get to shoot anything, it takes forever. Apparently I was so bored I was just shooting walls for no reason. Finally, some action. Well, scratch that, it looks like I have to go find a key or something and do more running around. This guy's been eviscerated. Something tore his intestines straight out. I love how calm he is for someone just getting their intestines tore straight out. I'll stand guard here. You go inside and take a look around. Mortal Kombat Gold seems to play great. Those frames per second seem high and the controls are working good. When I was younger playing Mortal Kombat, the only character I wanted to play with was Liu Kang. But now that I'm older, the only characters I want to play with is Sub-Zero or Scorpion. And I guess that's because I've always wanted to be a ninja. And the only way to live out my ninja fantasies is by playing Ninja Gaiden or Mortal Kombat. Finish him! 
Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness seems to play pretty good, but I have noticed some sound issues. The sound is working just fine here, but when I load around, the background sound disappears. So the game is still plenty playable, you just get less music. Namco Museum. So this is all older arcade games. So we'll try out Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Man. And Miss Pac-Man seems to play great, but I did notice maybe a couple of sound problems. So when I eat the second ghost, we'll see here in just a second, the sound seems to cut out for just a few. So let me get a power up and I'll show you. Come on, ghost. All right, so I eat one ghost, second ghost, and then the sound kind of cuts out for just a few there. So I don't know if this happened on the original hardware. I might have to play it on there just to confirm, but it seems like it shouldn't be doing that. So Miss Pac-Man seems to be cursed when using this emulator, but for Pac-Man, he doesn't seem to have any problems. So for Power Stone, it seems to be playing as it should. The sound is good, the controls are good, the visuals are good. But while I was recording the gameplay, somehow I muted it and there's no sound to the gameplay. But I can indeed confirm that the sound works just fine. I played this game for about 20 minutes with no sound issues. The only problem was me being an amateur hitting that mute button on accident. Now this was a game back in the day when the Dreamcast was released that I tried out once and I didn't really care for it and I didn't play it again for a really long time. And I really messed out because when I did start playing it again, I became addicted and this game grew on me a lot. And what's not to like about this game? It's got cool graphics, cool weapons, cool fighting. It's an all around great game. And the last game on the list is Resident Evil 3 Nemesis and it seems to play pretty smooth. I never was a huge Resident Evil fan, but that being said, I have played most of them and this version on Dreamcast is pretty good. Okay, it's time for me to get out of here, but I will be doing some more videos in the near future with the NVIDIA Shield showing off emulation for other systems like Sega Saturn, Nintendo 64, PlayStation, and much more. And if you like this video, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe. And have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.